Sunday scaries are the worst, absolute worst, but a solid reflection and a brain dump at the end of the week can really ease those Sunday scaries if you're doing it every week. So today on the podcast, I'm talking about my own Friday reflection, brain dump, to-do list kind of cleanup process. I will give you the steps that I use and a solid action plan that you can put into practice this week if it sounds like your style. Welcome to the Marigold Force Podcast. Let's jump in. There is nothing worse than walking into your classroom on Monday morning and really not being sure of what you're supposed to be, what you should be working on. I know that feeling, it sucks, and it really sets your week off in kind of a negative, stressful spiral. So there is a habit that I put into place um, a couple years ago that has really helped with that Monday walking in stress, I have to do everything and really ease the Sunday scaries so I can go into the work week feeling really feeling really good. So this is a habit that I put into place starting, and I do mine on Fridays, almost pretty much at the end of the day. Excuse me. I have my prep period in the morning. So I do it in the morning on Friday. So I'm set for Monday. So what I do to reflect and clean up all of my post-it to-do list, brain dump everything and organize my thoughts so I'm ready for Monday. So the first thing I do is I gather my planner. I use a pen and paper planner. I grab my to-do list. Sometimes they're on post-it. Sometimes they're in a notebook. I have, I'm like kind of all over the place with to-do lists. So anywhere I've like captured ideas or to-do lists, I gather all those. So I've got my planner, do-do-do. And then um, that's it. And then I also will grab a, a clean sheet of paper where I'm going to put all my organized actions. So the first thing I look at is where I'm going as a teacher. So I'm talking about long-term things. So our conference is coming up. Is it the end of a quarter or a trimester or is a uh, semester? Is it the end of a unit? You're supposed to be like starting to assess the skills of a unit. Do you have any other planning goals coming up? And when are those happening? I like to write kind of like a countdown. Okay, three weeks till end of try to, two weeks till end of da, da, da. So I know in my head, I have this much more time to kind of accomplish things. So that's what I do first. Look at where I'm going. The second thing I'll do is I'll look at where I just came from in the past week. So I'll look at my daily plans. Um, I recently just switched over to a pen and paper planner. I just, the pen to paper just helps me clarify my thoughts a lot more easy, easily. And I feel like I'm more creative. I used to do my planning in my, in my laptop and I, it, I was struggled with a lot more. So in my planning book, I'll look at any reflections I have and I don't get super crazy. I'll write like the kids love that read aloud or they were confused about this concept or need anchor chart to clarify this, things like that. <clears throat> so I'll look through my week of plans and kind of see what I got done, what kind of still needs to be addressed. And then I'll also look at all of my post-it to-do list action items. So now that I know, okay, I wanted to like create these anchor charts. Okay. I wanted to create this resource. Okay. I wanted to create this like incentive system. Now I have everything fresh in my brain about what's going on. When everything's in my brain, I really pause and look at what's most important before creating my to-do list for the following week. So looking ahead, what, what's coming, what needs to get done based on where I was at last week? Am I moving towards that goal? Am I getting closer to where I need to be by that deadline? That's really what's driving what's most important. So then with that frame of mind, I will create, I love a three column to-do list. If you haven't heard me talk about this before, the three column to-do list allows me to put everything on what I think is important onto my to-do list, but it also forces me to prioritize because I know as teachers, we have, we want the sun, moon, and stars for our students, but it's not possible. So it feels good to still put it on a to-do list as something I'm going to do. But oftentimes I don't get to everything on my to-do list, but by doing three columns, it prioritizes. So it's really easy to set up. Just grab a piece of paper, create three columns. Your first column is labeled today. The today column are for the essential, I have to get these done today, no ifs, ands, or buts. 
The middle column, I always label this week. So sometime this week, I need to get this accomplished. And then the last column, I label this month. So those are all the things I love to get to. I would love to create a buddy system for whatever. Those are all like the dreamy things. Those go in this month, depending on how your brain works and how you function, you can change the labels. Like I had, I have a friend who does today, tomorrow, this week. So whatever you want to do is fine with me, helps you prioritize. The most important thing with the today column is the today column should have maybe two, depending on how time consuming through three tasks, be cutthroat with this. These are essential. If you don't get them done, bad things are going to happen. Don't put something in the today column, like, or reorganize my binders. That will never be a today job. Never. I love organizing binders. It helps my brain work. There might be a time where like everything is so all over the place where I can't focus, then that would maybe be a today column. But today things are things that are absolutely essential, like lesson planning, communication with families, grading, feedback, those types of things would be a today column. So now I have in my brain, look at where I'm going, look at where I've uh, look at what I've done. I have a clear idea of what's most important on my today column. I'm going to mark down, okay, this is what I'm going to work on. First thing when I walk into the door on Monday morning, I'll put all my other tasks in either this week or this month. Once that's done, that's it. That is it. It sounds simple, but using that three column, the three column checklist to-do list is so freeing. And I will do a whole different podcast episode on like more things about that type of checklist system, to-do list system, because it's incredible. So my last thing that I would want to come back to with one weekly habit to ease those Sunday scaries is be really, really intentional with what you decide is important. So like I said, we want the sun, moon, and stars as educators. We want everything to be beautiful and perfect, but perfection can get in the way of being done and being done will allow us to be ourselves and be humans outside of our teacher hats. So be intentional, keep it simple, build in that reflection so we can eat some of those Sunday scaries. That's it for the Marigold First podcast this week. Um, I will see everyone next week with some more tips, tricks, advice, inspiration, mindset, all the things. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. We did it. Another week of the Marigold First podcast. Welcome to anyone who's new to us in this community. Thank you to everyone who's been here for a little bit. If you didn't know, we are on all of the social media platforms. Instagram and Facebook are my favorite. We're also on Pinterest. So if you need more bite-sized, like one, two minute chunks of inspiration or tips and tricks, follow us on there because that's where Joel and I love to dish it out. Thanks for being here. We couldn't do any of this without the support of our community. Hopefully everyone's having a wonderful school year. See you next week.